Hey, what is going on, you guys? We are live, and uh, hopefully I've figured out what was going on with my microphone before because I had it plugged into uh, – my computer was plugged into – a um, USB device that had another way to power it. And I think that's where I was getting this, this feedback or this ground loop or something. Anyway, I'm plugging it now directly into the computer, into one of the USB C's, not through a little adapter and it should, should be working better now. So anyway, today we're going to be going over the body of the vanquish VS 410. I've painted mine like a gunmetal gray and an orange. Um, it's a little bit more of a burnt orange probably than it's even showing up for you guys on the screen. But um, it was too bright when I first did it. It was really fluorescent, and I didn't want it that fluorescent for an older style truck like this. So I went ahead and uh, didn't back it with white. I just used the, um, the gun metal as the backer, which really darkened it up. So I'm digging how it looks, and uh, yeah. It's uh, it's looking good to me, but I also sprayed it then with black on the inside because we're going to be adding in these other elements to the inside like this, get a nice black bed in there and uh, adding decals and some of that stuff. Oh, it looks like it's a little light actually. I'm seeing through it. Hmm. I may have to paint that again. So we'll see if uh, we'll, we'll get through some of the parts here and what I have to do. Cause I definitely have these done, but yeah, now I'm seeing these in the studio lighting and I held it up to the sun, but it's really, it's really fit. It's showing through there pretty bad in a few spots. So, I think I need to go back and give it another coat for that. But we'll move forward with some of the other stuff. We do have the fenders. Um, interesting thing about the fenders for me is uh, that you paint them on the inside, which is where you could have tire rub, which would then rub the paint off. So I thought that was interesting that the uh, paint goes on the inside of the fenders. Maybe it makes sense. Maybe I should paint the outside of them too. That'd be inside the truck. I don't know. I don't know if anybody else has it. Uh, RC and Extra Man, what is going on? I'm doing well. Keeping super busy right now. Um, I've got a bunch of work things coming up even later today. So you'll see me looking at my phone as I've got some text messages for upcoming shoots and stuff pinging in. But... Um, yeah, it's been busy. Uh, RC propaganda, not sure if it's worth it or not for the VS410 Pro. Um, it all depends if you go and you do all the extras like the axles and stuff anyway. Um, but so many people upgrade their trucks and they end up spending even more on a truck that they buy ready to run because then they go and they want to, you know, add all these upgrades to it that these already come with stock. So I think that's, I guess where, where the question mark lies, especially the axles. These axles are really so much of, of the cost of this. The transmission is real nice, very, very clean build. Um, but I mean, you're spending a lot just on the, uh, the axles alone. You're busy as well, <laughs> RC Nixter. I hear you. What's good? I watched your video, RC Propaganda, of um, the NorCal meetup. That was pretty sweet. You guys change it up a lot in a day. It's really cool to see all the different layouts that they were able to run through in one day. Give you guys lots of track time that way. Very cool to see. Barbecue, what is up? So, let's see here. 
Ooh, that's dark. Let me see if I can make an adjustment to that. These webcam settings are something else. trying to adjust the brightness, but then I have to go back and adjust the contrast and that ain't looking right. Let's do a reset and see what it says. That's close. I'm just going to brighten it a little bit. There's a lot of white here. All right. So basically what I've got to do is take these fenders Get off the stickers on them, and then we'll get them up and in the truck. Maybe if I add a little more light from above. Oh, that helps some. We'll get it figured out. Just running a regular old webcam up on the side here. The locker in the LT makes the drive so different. Ooh. I don't think it should be that different. They have it pretty thick. I guess it depends how much you hammer down. They're a bit of an animal to control out there anyway, in my opinion. Um, they're definitely... A handful to keep keep going because they have so much power i'll have to put the diff in mine the diff locker or spool <clears throat> barbecue uh is asking if i'm definitely going to uh, rc dixter man have a good one enjoy getting back to work I'm still working from home, so I'm trying to take a, a little bit of a lunch break here. And then I've got calls to be on this afternoon at about 3. So I'm trying to take a little bit of a break right now. Uh, so Barbecue's asking if I'm definitely going to Stone Mountain. Um, as of right now, we are definitely going. Um I am, however, kind of waiting and curious to get my taxes back and find out what uh, what damage is going to be there, being an independent contractor and all that. And you save up and try and have money saved up for paying taxes at the end of the year. But I'm just hoping that I saved up enough. I have enough sitting there. So that's kind of the question mark at this point. Because, you know, you're trying to gauge based on what your write-offs are and what that makes your actual income and a whole bunch of variables. Kind of stuff that I don't like to think about. My brain doesn't work very well in that space. Some people love, love thinking and all that money and math and mine doesn't <laughs> all right so he's saying that they did a good job at norcal they were just testing a couple different things okay public says the orange and the gunmetal pops yeah it's really it's a darker orange than probably I was expecting it to be a little bit, but I do like how it turned out a lot. So it, it feels right for the era. It's almost kind of like a burnt orange for what they're going with, with the grills and all that of what style they're you're looking at.
JNK Noob is at work taking off baseboard trim. What's going on, Black Ops? A bunch of people popping in now. Welcome, guys. All right, so I got to get back to the manual here because I was moving ahead with the build the other day, and then I had to take stuff apart because I was rushing ahead of myself. So I was putting these little plates on right here, but these plates should not go on unless you have the fenders in place because they actually go underneath. And so I was... I was messing up a little bit and rushing ahead. So Kagan is in the house as well. Welcome, Green Frog. We'll look in here now and find out what page we were on. I, you know, I hate getting a break in the build like that because it, um, it just means that I have to figure out where I was, and that is a, a very much a stall point for me. When I get stopped, it's hard for me to get things rolling again. So it looks like 3 by 10 millimeters are going into the back here and into the front ones. So I just got to find all of these screws now, which I put on the, the desk here in front of me. one of them so that'll be my reference drop them right in here so i can see when i get them I'll grab four of them real quick it's all the kind of stuff that'd get cut out if i was not doing this live oh well should be a 2.5 millimeter it should already be on my drill so once i get these installed i should then be able to put on my um, my ESC and stuff receiver all right but overall painting all that wasn't too bad on this I really like the open bed I feel like having the open bed on the body just made it easier for me to work inside of here. I don't know why, because I could come through from here instead of coming over the, the lip of this and trying to get in, I could kind of get in, felt like a little tighter on things. So that small little thing made it, all of the, the tape work seemed to be real easy to get at in here and work on. So masked it off, wasn't too bad. Actually, I didn't do too bad a job with it. So I brought the gray down into the front here, uh, but I also cut the orange through the back of it. So that this kind of made sense to me, I guess. I don't know. I was trying to make it tie together in spots. So then I brought the gray across the back. And uh, that way I could drop it all the way down instead of doing these orange as well all the way up to the top. I wanted to have more of the gray. So I did the back of it as well. And then I'll figure out some kind of decals or something to put on it. Big head is in the house as well. Welcome guys. Yeah, barbecue. It does um, does go with quite a few colors. Give me one second here. Seeing. We 
go. Can I phone or not? All right, so got one of them in. Now we got to do the front one. Is everybody at work right now or people at home? What's everybody doing right now? It feels like I'm always at work these days because I'm always sitting at my desk that I work at. So from YouTube to work to so many things right at that desk and all up here in this office. So it's just a lot. <laughs> I did not use liquid mask. I used blue painter's tape and then I used uh, exacto. Well, I didn't use an exacto knife. I used a, a razor blade like this. So like a box blade and just got in there and cut with this. I like these cause I, keep them sharp all the time they just come out so easily flip the blade around and keep working so um i always have this with me whereas i do have exacto knives but they're over there and i never know where i have the i honestly never know where the, the parts are for them so I, if i needed to get new pieces for it new blades i wouldn't know where to even look all right, so that goes together real nice. So these are more of those three by tens. So that seems like it's going to be the popular size right now for all of this stuff. So we're just going to grab a bunch of them and put them here. Now we're going to have our metal tray. And it's going to lock everything in place. I'm trying to get to the comments, but the comments aren't auto scrolling for me at the moment. So I got to go over here and scroll them again. Oh, that sucks, barbecue. He says he's, uh, in a meet a median guy to try and get a shopping cart dent out of his tundra. Man, that's a bummer. It totally is. It's your birthday present they gave you. That's sweet of them. All right, see you, Jane K. Uh, I do use liquid mask on a, a couple of them. I have some. Um, it works great, but it's just for this stuff where it's straight lines like this, it's just easier and less mess to pull out when it's just tape. So you could go like the the route of getting like the striping stuff from Tamiya and their kind of tapes or whatever, but I just use the... I have a couple of different widths of the painter's tape, and that's just what I use. No real reason why, other than it's what I had. So propaganda saying the weather's getting better for them. Okay, this is kind of hard to find where it's supposed to go. Why isn't this all lining up? Maybe I over tighten these. These are on little sliders, so you can move them back and forth. But I must be off because neither of them are, are hitting their spot. Oh, 
Our weather is getting pretty nice here right now. I'm liking being outside. The mosquitoes, however, are coming back. And when they're around, they are in full force. They don't mess around. We, we grow big mosquitoes here. All right, now we got it. That would be a pain if you weren't using a driver. Try and get that initial bite in these holes. But yeah. The guy's going to try to go to bed. Oh, did you do an all night? See you, man. Yeah, DeWalt's are nice. They've got a nice driver. I, uh, all my stuff is just Ryobi. That's kind of where I started when I was young. And I have so many batteries and tools now that it just seems like a pain to change, completely change systems. So kind of like camera gear for me in a way. Once you get a bunch of lenses and things, it's really hard to change over to a different system because you have so much invested. I've been looking, uh, Sony's got a cool new cinema camera out. They call it a cinema camera. It's still just a DSLR, but it's got like a, a beefier housing on it and some fans. So it doesn't overheat as much because it's geared toward the video people, but it lacks a lot of the things that you'd have in a cinema camera, like ND filters built in and stuff, but they're calling it cinema. So we'll just humor them and go along with it. But um, it's in their cinema line. And I really like what they're doing with it. And what I like is that it's small and compact and like a DSLR still, but does have some niceties to it, like a a handle on it that has all of the audio attachments and all that junk. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. RC propaganda says he just got into rigid. Rigid is nice stuff too. A great warranty on it. For sure. That's what my brother-in-law uses. I don't know if Rigid was around back in the day when I started buying stuff. If it was, it wasn't common to me, common knowledge. Is this a work call? No. Scam. Yeah, the camera won't get you more views. My camera is more for work stuff. Um, that's what I'm looking at it for. So at the end of the month, I've got some travel stuff coming up again, which is nice. I get to uh, get to head out on the road a little bit. Still in the U.S., but I did reapply for my global entry and all that getting ready in the hopes that everything's going to start to hopefully open back up. But, um, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Yeah. I've got battery battery stuff for almost everything. I do have some that are still corded, uh, like my bigger framing nailer and all that, but I do have the, in Ryobi, because I do have the the batteries, I do also have some of their um, nail guns and that that are battery powered, and it's super nice to not have to get a compressor and all that out to do it. But yeah, for all my uh, work stuff, um, it's nice to have the. Uh, the microphone mounts and all that stuff on top. And you can just plug in XLR cables for microphones. Um, but 
and that Panasonic has it, but it's a micro four third sensor, which is not nearly as good as the full frame ones out there. But Canon is just kind of, they came out with that 5D Mark II back in the day, and it was the game changer of its time. And they've quickly fallen behind everybody uh, as far as innovation goes for, for that field, which is unfortunate. But the, it, it's so much extra work in a field where they're not hiring as many people uh, for a single shoot like they used to. And you're trying to manage audio and everything. And then editing with audio is a pain in the butt if it's not direct into camera. Um, so you have to have a good enough video or audio chip in the camera to record it at a high enough quality and yeah, whatever, all that stuff. But Sony and Panasonic have been killing it. Come out with some really cool stuff. So I went Panasonic, but now I want something that's not micro four thirds and can give a little bit more depth of field. So yeah, there's a new A7 Cinema one that came out. That's like the A7S, but it's a cinema version. It won't overheat as much. All right. See you, Green Frog. All right. So it looks like we've got all of that together. I am missing one screw. That's uh, the right length. So I might have put one in the wrong spot that was a short one. I don't know. I'm missing one of the 8 millimeter screws. I don't think it's going to be a big deal, though. Where it, where it goes, we'll be able to we'll patch that in there with something soon. Um, next, and I might have used it here actually. I can back some of these out and see. Not that one. This is the battery tray that's going to go in next. That's a long one. The nice thing about these ones by Ryobi is that it has a uh, replaceable battery. I have some of the other screwdrivers like this. These are all long. And they don't have a replaceable battery. And it's just really nice to be able to drop this battery out of here and have a, a second one on a charger. So when you're in the middle of a project, bam, you just drop a new one in. I've got a new one sitting on a charger over there as we speak. It's really more like a screwdriver than a drill. All right. So now all this stuff has to actually go into the chassis. All right. So we need to add these little spacers here. Oh, where's that going to go? I might have put that in the wrong one. Shoot. Two times. So that's where my extra screws went to. I was only supposed to do three screws up front and one in the rear, and I put two in the rear on both. So following directions is not one of my strong suits. So pop these out. Yeah, big drills are a pain. Uh, I have one of these that it'll go straight like an actual screwdriver as well instead of having the, the turned handle. I just don't like where they have the mode to switch it from forward to reverse. Kind of clunky. All right, now 
now we're going to do this part. So I say we start with these funky add-on parts. Right here. So this is going to go on like that. It's going to use these longer. Yeah, here we go. Countersunk screws. We go into here. Slide right through. We'll go ahead and slide two of them through. Just to kind of hold it in place like so. And try and get this started here. What's cool is I went to hold it in place and I totally missed. Awesome. Kind of a funky, funky setup there. I'm going to leave these loose so I can actually get the other one in and make adjustments to it once I do screw this in. As well. Oh, I know I'm on the wrong bit size. Now we're cooking. Yeah, these are super compact, really great for for using, um, and it has a standard Ford reverse on it. My other one has a switch just like this, and you're you're always pushing the wrong one. It's kind of annoying. So you're putting it into first and second gear instead of reversing, which, as you know, can strip stuff out. So it's not my favorite one to use these days. For my RC cars. Find out where I put that piece. Here it is. It's lodged in the chassis. All right. So we'll line this in here. Get it lined up. And our tray in, it's gonna be nice and low. Which is nice. Kind of rear weighted, but it's center, and you do have the motor and the transmission is pretty big in this up front. So we'll see how the balance weight weight is how the weight is balanced would be a better way to say that or how balanced the truck is when we have weight in it but it seems pretty centralized which is nice we have a mass kind of right here Yeah, these are like 50 bucks. They're not super cheap, but um, yeah. The DeWalt, DeWalt one's a little bigger. I do like that it stands up. This one you have to kind of lay down, but it's a small detail thing. All right, so now we're getting to some of the extra parts here that we'll be installing into this guy. So it looks like we'll have to do a little bit of drilling through the plastic to 
install this because there's no holes currently. in the plastic for the stick shift. But I'm going to take a look at some of the decals first and see what we need to do here because it's not talking about decals at all for these. So that may help me get swayed about what I do. So I do have to remove this protective film, but I do have to spray paint that more. Looks like we also have to drill for the steering wheel. Nope, that one has holes in it already, which is nice because you've got to line that up proper here. When you do it. Which actually lines up there. Down on the bottom. All right, so let's see. We do have some interior stickers here we can install. Starting with the speedometer and things. I like to use my knife to help guide me. I can line it up. I'm trying to keep this in front of the camera. It's going to mess me up. That looks good. All right, we'll see you in propaganda. Have a good one. I'm just on here hanging out because I got stuff to work on. Keeps me honest and keeps me working. So, Barbecue, are you thinking about going to Stone Mountain then? Since you asked the question. Or are you definitely going? You're really trying? Okay. How far of a drive is that for you? There we go. That'll work. Bag H. So. I'm going to have to hold off on putting the bed in or the interior in because I have to paint that a little more. But we can still, I think, get some good progress here. Let's see how many of these knives I have. Probably have four of them now. I 
Uh, six hours for you? Yeah, that's a haul. It's um, it's about eight, I think, for us. Somewhere around eight. So it's it's not a short ride, but Dennis is working on that truck for me, and I really want to be able to pick it up from him. What part am I looking for? Some kind of steering wheel part. Don't see anything like that yet. Oh, here. All right, so now I'm going to install the steering wheel onto here. And that screws in, and then this will screw into the base. So let's start with that while it's small. Got to come in at an angle to screw down in. with really small screws. Hopefully these are one fives. They are. A lot of people going that didn't make USTE, okay. What's going on, Tim? Oh, but outside green gravel, that's fun. I'm waiting. I'm supposed to have a box blade coming for my tractor. And I ended up having to call them to see what was up with it. And they, because they were hard to get any right now because of the metal supply issue. And then it turned out like that the quality equipment, John Deere stuff that we have here locally that does all the warranty stuff. Um, they said they only had one in all of their U S warehouses and he was going to try and get my name on it. And then I didn't hear from him. I was a little worried. And he said, Oh no, we have it. It's in stock here. I had it moved. He just never called me and uh, just said they've been too busy. Which I get, but still. It's kind of the way people do business these days is kind of weird. I'm just glad that they didn't sell it to somebody else that saw it sitting there. So I hadn't paid for it yet. I just told him I wanted it and then. That's the last I heard from the guy dealing with it. And he said he was going to work on it for me and get back with me and never did. So who's going that didn't make it to USTE barbecue? I'm curious. I know Sean's trying to go, Dennis. Um, I think Exo Cage is going to be there as well. All right. So that portion is ready. 
to tape on here, but we're not ready to tape on yet because we still got work to do. So I'm going to move ahead and build the front end stuff next. So that um, it's ready to go. We have Fern. Yeah, Honey and Wayne will be there. They're putting it on. Yeah, there's quite a few people. All right. These are going on here. So next we're going to work on still on the radiator. This has some heft to it. I'm not going to lie. It's got a little bit of weight. I could paint these, I guess. Not going to. Make them stand out a little bit more. But this is pretty solid. So you'd only see it from the inside, I guess. So I'm not going to take the time. Got other things to get to. 11 Charlie Adventure Time, Brent. Oh, there's a bunch of people going. Well, I definitely have to make it. That's what I said, though, is it's a long way for a one day event. That's why I was curious if anybody was getting in early and was going to be uh, running or anything at the mountain the day before or something. Because we're going to have to bust out on Sunday to get back. For the kids' school and all that. So we're going to be hustling. Okay. Well, I'll definitely be working on trying to get there. Like I said, it is in it is in the plans right now. It's been discussed, and if the money and all that's there, then I'll make it happen. You're trying to get there Friday. Yeah, so my thought is maybe even, I don't know, I'd have to leave early. It's such a long drive for us. I don't want to spend an extra hotel night, so if I could leave early enough to get there and still be at the trail, at least for an evening run on Friday, have to get lights installed in all my cars. But then I don't even know if the park is open or not. But being a little bit more west than here should stay lighter longer. And it would be good after driving all day to get out and walk around. Looks more rugged with a darker backer. Yeah. It's really, um, it's really burnt orange now. I mean, the bright would have been cool too. It would have made the gray. Uh, I, if I did the bright, I probably would have switched to um, black because I think that the bright orange wouldn't have worked as well with the gray or, or the gunmetal. So I, I really like kind of where it's at. And I think once it gets on here, and you get this black bed in the back of it too. Let's just take a quick peek at it. I haven't done that yet.
Gonna move this mouse before I end the stream on accident. Yeah, I think it's gonna look good. Fortunately, the lighting sucks for this camera. Should have showed it up here. So I'm working on the front of it here, and that's going to be black. So that'll be nice. It's going to have a little bit of black in the bed, in the bed. So it's going to be like a three color in the end i think it'll look real sharp junk all over the table coffee yeah harley designs favorite it was kind of inspired by knowing that he loves orange stuff and so since this is the uh the vanquish truck i figured I would do something that I typically don't do. I mean, I have a couple of orange cars, actually. Um, four, maybe. Mm. Megalodon's pretty orange. I've got quite a few that have orange on them. I typically like black and orange or like black, green, and white. So I do like a, a bright color, usually. Not really a, a big into red, red cars, Not at least not as the main color. And blue, I'll do it for Bigfoot, but um, the low C stuff has a lot of blue. And I, I guess I do Son of a Digger, but typically if I'm choosing the colors, I'm going to have like yellow, green, black, orange kind of colors. Um. It's really not a licensed body, so it has stylings of several vehicles. All right, so this now goes, now that it's together, it's going to sandwich with this and hold it on the front, I guess. Let's see here. Oh, this is going to be behind. And go. Like so. Kind of feel like I should scratch up or fog up the lenses a little bit. So then from the inside of this, it's shorter, 2.5 millimeter screws. So it's cool. I found that locally we have a, um, a company called RTL Fasteners that sells, I think they're like what the number one provider of servo screws. Now those are the um, tapping servo uh, screws that go into your servo saver, but they also sell a whole bunch of just assorted bolts and things. Um, so I have them local right by here. So I'm gonna have to be definitely checking them out. So next is we're going to do our light buckets. Which just screw through from the back. But I always like it when I find like a local place like that. It's a local RC company. So it's pretty cool to find out. 
So I have some of their washers, plastic or nylon um, washers and spacers and stuff. But I don't normally get other places. But I'll probably be getting some of the uh, standard screws and bolts that I just need to have on hand from them as well. Line this up. Pick the knot. Not wanting to go in. I am using the right one. I'm trying to look around this mic. And honestly, this lighting is all from the front for the camera. And so I'm struggling. There's not a whole lot of backlight. There we go. But once I get two of them in, we know it's locked in place. So the next two should be easy. I have some matte clear. Yeah, I'll have to do that. But it's, it's going to require quite a bit of tape off to do it. But RC Mass Master is right. <laughs> Chainsaw, that's rough, man. You hate orange only because of the Denver Broncos? What did the Broncos ever do to you? That was a small screw. My cower C mat down, but I got so much stuff on it, it's not helping me out very much. I just need to start taking stuff off the desk when it's not in play. I've actually got two cower C mats down, and I still messed up. Once you think I could just brush on a, a, a mat, I sprayed the mat clear into say a, a can and then grab the a brush and paint it on. Do you think that would do the same thing? Done that with other spray paints where I wanted a specific color to match something. I just spray it into a little solo cup and I get a brush and I paint. All right, so there's that. I gotta do the back ones. Which again, I don't have any buckets. For them. Or I have the buckets, I don't have any light bulbs for them, LEDs. I'm going to put it in place in case for whatever reason I ever sell it and somebody that does like lights wants to go ahead and install them. They have the ability. Lights and all the light switches and all the things is just not my 
Not my cup of tea. All right, Tim. Have fun, man. Fresh asphalt. That'll be nice. We're waiting for the stump grinder to call about coming and grinding our trees. You're supposed to do it this week. It said Monday or Tuesday, and then got pushed back. Push back. Push back. People are busy, man. Some some people are real busy. It's kind of weird how this pandemic has done that. It's made some people really busy and then other people, you know, it's taken away their work, whereas other other fields are busier than ever. It's kind of crazy. Life is unpredictable. I guess that's what keeps it interesting. In my mic. All right, I'm pushing this out. So last time I was on a live, I did that, and uh, it spilled my drink all over the table. This could have been done different. All right, so the answer was don't use the power tool for that. <laughs> it was just way easier to hold the uh, screw on the driver and in place with just a hand driver, not a, a drill, and that just made it easier. The... Um, Microphone is way in the way, though, too. That doesn't help. There we go. There's two of them in. So now they should just line up. Go back to our driver. It probably doesn't help that my driver bit is a... No, it's not a ball end. Screws just don't seem to stay on it as nice. 
And it's a nice bit. It's a MIP, so. Cool. Translucent red would have been cool here too. Uh, I guess I could have clear frosted from the inside, then I wouldn't have to mask. Shoot. Not thinking. That'll be easy enough to take off and do though. All right, so. There's the front end now. That gray blending right into that black. Sharp. I like it. But I do think if I frost those front lights, it'll look even better. So I'll probably, probably take off these screws eventually here and do that. It's not a big deal to do. Now I think about doing it from the inside. All right, that step is done. Front and rear lights. Now we have to do the windshield wipers here. Thanks, Black Ops. So it's a great looking body. Yeah, Joe, people spend the free money um, considering it, it extra. Yeah. Chainsaw says he worked more than ever last year. I ended up having to really hustle because I went part-time. So I worked a lot as well. Definitely worked a lot. Showing some kind of washer. Here they are. And put the, the windshield wipers on. So more of these tiny little screws. They're trying to mess with me here. Just gonna push it through this. Little holder. See the back. Somehow hold it all together and screw it down. Does anybody ever tape these things together as they're doing it? Like tape something in place? Like it feels like I should be taping this right. hold this all right we got it kind of a pain in the butt But I mean, I get why. See, now I'm getting all those text messages. All right. Let's 
about my meeting. A couple of cool shoots coming up. A couple of high-profile ones. Those are always interesting. It's like being a, a fly on the wall for some of the interviews and stuff you see on TV. Kind of what it feels like, oh, but you're in there filming it. All right. Windshield wipers are on. Guessing mirrors come soon here. Were there mirrors? Door handles. No mirrors. Okay, cool. I've got my wheels assembled already, so we're getting down. We're getting down to it. Find out where I put everything here. These go behind the door handles. And here are the handles. Okay, cool. Joe Gaines says, I bet my buddy's called for three to be cut down. People calling these damn patios, sidewalks, left and right. Wow. I know my brother just is getting one right now. People already call me for the tree work now that the snow is melting. It says chainsaw, yeah. Chainsaw says two jobs as well as side work. That's awesome. You know, if you can get if you can get the money, man. I'm all for getting it. Put in the work and get it. I know that my neighbor's been pretty busy too with his because we've been trying to get them to come over. He's a contractor and do some things. I just need to learn to do more of it. I should have just been a like an apprentice all year. Yeah, Joe, you're going to work when you're young and not when you're old and your body's beat up. Yeah. And that's what my neighbor's gone, kind of gone and done. Now he's got guys that are working for him. Been able to grow. Grow the business because of the hard work he put in when he was young. Got his name out there. People trust his work. Chainsaw, wow. Climbing years for trees for 20 years, man. Always impressed when when uh, the teams climb the trees versus use bucket trucks. Although the guy that just did our one tree, 
was pretty impressive with a bucket truck. We had a massive tree in the front, which required a, a bucket. I am definitely not complaining that a lot of my video work right now is uh, behind a desk. I don't know, that's not true. I do complain some days, but it is uh, a nice reprieve from setting up and tearing down all the equipment every day. Go to a shoot, set up, tear down. Not complaining. I do miss getting to be outside more, but. Hauling the gear is not missed that much. Sandbags and heavy stands and hanging, hanging lighting and all that. A whole lot more that goes into it than just pit, push and play or record on a camera. Hey, Joe. Um, yeah, no problem. I do video production for work. So anything from going out on shoots to um, editing all kinds of stuff. So that is what I do on the daily. So I spend a lot of time right now in this office. From work to uh, to YouTube. <laughs> wow, that's really heavy. The front of this thing. This is a substantial piece of plastic up here. All right, so wheels I've got. I, I already did. I've got these Vanquish ones. So with these, you actually have to drill onto the chassis that's itself. It's a little bit of work. I'd actually already put it together and had to take it apart. Once I realized my mistake. So like this stuff is all in the way. It's not a good place to put this tray. I have a Ziploc here. Here it is with all my parts in it. All right, so we're going to get these hubs on here and then move on forward. So these will go on.
and then the nut goes on to this. That's what threw me off. So, seven mil wrench. So you, you literally are going to put these on here, and each wheel has to be screwed on like it's basically a real one, on a one to one. That was my mistake. I was sitting here looking at it like, what did I do? I don't see what I did wrong. But now I see these are just literally mounted right onto the axle. Like so. So that is one of the differences when you're you're paying for this incision stuff that people don't realize, especially if you're going for the scale kind of real scale look for it. This takes it to another level versus just using the nut to hold it all on and take your wheels off real nice and quick. It's definitely different. So it will slow down the changing of tires if you do want to change them or wheels, I should say. Man. This is one smooth looking build. And it hasn't been as much work as I make myself think it's going to be. The, the main slowdown was having to paint these fenders to keep moving forward. Um, but the rest of it has not been too bad at all. So now to put these on, we're going to literally bolt these in. So, get the thread lock, get it ready on this bag, and these are all two millimeter. Yep, two millimeter. Gonna do my star pattern as I do this. So we're gonna do one screw, then across the next, and kind of go around it like it's a star pattern. And then we'll come back and actually tighten them down. We're just kind of barely getting them snug at the moment. Don't wanna over tighten with the drill, so. Thanks, John Connell. I'm pretty stoked with how it's turning out. And uh, kind of matches the orange of the Spectrum motor in here and the ESC. Get my orange build. I'm a big fan of the gunmetal. If it was just me, I probably just would have done it gunmetal, maybe gunmetal in black. Um, but I was trying to get outside of my comfort zone for stuff. It also, I guess, will probably pop a little more for video. Ah, shoot. 
I'm messing up. Somebody should have caught me. I didn't put the cap on. Somebody should have caught me. All right, so as soon as I get these wheels on, it'll be time to start thinking about the electronics going in and uh, giving it its first run. We're almost there. Just trying to get myself to stay motivated and keep moving forward with it because it's really not that hard of work. It's just making myself stop. I've got plenty of other things I can edit or do right now. It's just a matter of saying stop for a minute and work, get it done. Liking these wheels a lot. How many people out there, anyone running the incision wheels? This is my first set of them. I'm running with the J Concepts landmines on them. I tell you, I do really, really love these. Uh, if I have to use just a handheld driver, these Vanquish ones are night and day different. And I wouldn't have spent the money on them except that somebody locally had a set. And when I actually used one for the first time, I couldn't believe how quick they were in your hand to work with. And uh, I finally, you know, I had MIPs. I hadn't like skimped on tools. But um, I'll tell you what, they're just some of the nicest feeling tools because there's this bearing in the end so you can grip it at the back and just kind of spin it. Especially when you're pushing down, just put pressure on it and spin with your the outside of your fingers like this. Just makes such quick work for a non, non -dr uh, drill or motorized driver. It's so fast. But like any, you can get a nice like blister on your hand from doing it. <laughs> if you don't have nice calluses on your hands. But they are not cheap. 
I think they were sixty dollars for a set of four. Like fifteen bucks each wrench, basically. So if nothing else, if I didn't want to buy all of them in the for sixty bucks, I might be tempted to at least get a two millimeter and a two point five, which I use all the time. They now that I've been doing more building, it's made a huge, huge difference in uh, me feeling like building isn't too bad. <laughs> when you're fighting tools, you definitely notice. And I just didn't want to be fighting the tools anymore. But everybody's got their own things that they like. It's just something that I've, I've really taken to is, is these and, uh, and then my MIP drill driver bits with the ball in so you can get it stuff from an angle. So nice. Between the two, it's made working on these just so much more bearable. If you guys haven't seen it, I've been in the backyard working a lot on the monster truck stuff and uh, having a blast. And we've also been doing a lot more, the kids and I, with our um, Axial Yeti Junior Can-Am Mavericks that we've had repainted to look like Monster Jam Speedsters. And we've really been ripping with those. So I've got my motor in. I've got my servo in so really uh, i just have to put in the esc and receiver plug them all up and bind it that is going to be a fun day which might actually be today i won't have the body installed yet because i got to do that one little touch up of paint i was tempted to not do it but when you work this hard on something to skimp on it, you're just hurting yourself. You're the only loser. So I've talked myself out of just throwing it together. Uh, Black Ops has a freestyle RC servo savers coming. That's awesome, dude. I have a bunch of them behind me on trucks. I really do put them on everything. I don't make any affiliate commission for uh, for talking about them. I just really think they make solid products. It's hard to get a hold of because it's just... A few people making it up in, uh, where are they at? Wisconsin. Also started up and running their own uh, RC track and raceway up there, hobby store. So they are super busy. And then if you own a business or you have any type of online whatever just dealing with all the emails and all that that come in i get that it's tough i totally understand
RC drives. Um, yeah, they're a bit pricey. Seven forty nine for a kit. Uh, but it's quality stuff. You're already getting metal drive shafts. That's a hundred bucks. Um, metal axles. If you were to buy all these in the guts for them, um, and you didn't just go with the knockoffs or whatever, uh, for an SCX 10, I mean, you're looking at almost 300 bucks. So there's a lot of value in the, the quality. It's what a lot of people pay when they buy a truck and then they continually upgrade it. So here we go. Let me switch camera. There it is with the wheels. Those are the incision ones. I think they're whole shots. That. I just throw this in for the look. Try not to get my greasy hands on this too much. There it is. That is it. I like it. And those fenders definitely set it off. So, go back to the other angle maybe. Here it is sitting with my coffee. There we go. That's looking good. I love the look of this body. I have a couple other ones I could put on it, potentially. I did buy a creep body that I wasn't sure what I was going to put it on yet. I could see putting it on here, maybe. But this one just looks so good on here. I don't know that I will. I thought about doing some kind of decals on the side, but I don't know that I want to. So the electronics... are the Spectrum Firma. It is a uh, waterproof brushless crawler system, 2100 kV motor already installed. And the cool thing about it is it's kind of like the Hobbywing Axe. You know, they don't ever say it, um, but it's it's pretty much based off of that system by hobby wing because i'm pretty sure hobby wing makes their electronics um a lot of this carries very much the look of the hobby wing electronics as well with their special flair to it with their logo embossed and colors they've changed up the plug here a little bit it doesn't have the screw on but it kind of pops together instead and so this is probably going to sit. I don't know how I want to do it yet. I might take it across so that the wires will kind of go across there. It's a really long set of cables on here. Um, and that's for the program card the fan that's for the fan so those will have to come over i was thinking about doing the wires over the top here of the transmission to it and then 
routing these wires back over for and just tying it to these and taking it over here for the receiver. I mean, if I do it here, it's just going to really bunch up all of this cabling coming off of here, which I guess is not the end of the world. Like so. Or the other thought was to just kind of go over here with them all. And then bring all these back and put the receiver over here and tie these to it. And mount the power somehow down over here. So I haven't decided. where these are all going to go yet. But I kind of feel like that makes more sense. It's all a mess regardless. I'll just have to try and really strap things together, running over the top of the transmission here. And plug in there. Hmm. That's what I think. Let's not just think it. Let's do it. How's that sound? Let's install it on here. Well, I mean, I could. I don't want the weight going back there, though. Drive shaft is there, so we'll mount all the wires back this way. Uh, RC drives, I actually like the Spectrum Smart stuff. I do too. Lucio is such a dope kit. I agree, man. Super dope. RC drives has to be one of your favorite non licensed bodies. Yeah, it is very nice. I do have to see how that all attaches, though. Double-sided taping it. Just the back of it. Hmm. Feel like we should tape that up. We'll see. All right. Bunch of messages are coming in here. All right, so I think I have some tape. If I have some tape, we'll go ahead and just install this stuff. If not, then we won't. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I keep it in here. Boom. And I've got isopropyl alcohol, which is great. Just seem, things seem to stick so much better when you use it just to do a quick clean and it dries so fast too. So we're just gonna clean down the areas where we think we're gonna install. Where did my receiver go? 
here. I've got a three channel for now. I just literally cut it right on here. Just put a little score in it. And usually that's enough. Did not score it enough. Actually I did. Cause it went through the red on the other side. Hmm. Interesting. I try my best to not touch it with my fingers, the sticker, because any oils from your hands seems to really quickly deteriorate the stickiness that it has. So I try not to, so I'm using the blade to try and peel. All right, so this aux cable for the fan is probably the shortest of the cables. If I run it sideways, they'll all be on this back side, so we're good. That felt like it really stuck good. I'm happy with that. Another cut line here. Peel this up. Try and keep the red side down. I'm actually going to try and put some over this to protect it. All right. Down on the ESC now. While the sticker's still on, I'm going to use it to push down. Really seat it on the ESC. our sticker, line it up, and push it down. So this is going to be our throttle cable. negative side toward us. Nice. The reef is all black, so Gonna go by shape. Steering, I need some zip ties to hold all this now. Do I have any up here? Don't see any. All right, try and wrap this cable a little. I don't know if you guys did ever do this where you wrap your wires, try and get a little coil out of them so they're not so long. We try and do that with our power lead. So just wrapping it around the tip of the driver here. 
Yeah, I'm pulling it tight. Now it just is like a little spring. And we'll just stick this in place here. But I do need to wipe this down as well. That other stuff bonded so well. Just a reminder of how good this works. What's going on, Sean's RC Adventures? I'm finishing up that truck you told me to buy. Getting the last finishing touches on her. Turning out pretty rad. I'm actually really excited because I can move on now to some of the other builds I have going on. Sean's just popping in real quick. I'm sure he's busy working now that he's back. That does not seem to want to fit there. Block the program port by installing it this way. It's like I need to remove one of the screws. If I remove one of them, I can get this to fit in here better. I don't think it's going to structurally change it. So we're just going to take it out. I want the program port to be able to be accessible, even though I plan to do it. The cool thing about these is that you're supposed to be able to do it through your controller um, to program it. But I still need to update my controller. There we go. That leaves the program opening. have battery right here a smart battery so the other thing is with now that I am running so much smart stuff that uh, with this smart ESC and receiver uh, I, don't I have a smart receiver actually but we'll be able to tell get info. So we'll have a smart receiver for this for sure. And then we'll be able to um, get information like how much runtime we have left. Cool stuff like that. Which makes me kind of geek out a little bit. This fan is going to go into my aux. Go. Boom. You know, if I spun this fan around, it probably will be wouldn't be so tight. Let me. Let's see about that. But is the body going to fit? That's the other question with the wires set where I have them. Will it interfere? With the interior. Dang it. I just spilled my coffee. 
Luckily, I spilled it onto a paper towel roll. I think it's going to work. I mean, it, it might be pushing up a little bit on the interior. But I don't think it's bad. Snug. Like a glove, though. Now to clean up my mess. Luckily, it spilled off the table and into the box of LMT parts down below. So those will smell good. This is good stuff right here. Can't win sometimes. Happened to me during uh, RC talk last week and I had to bounce out. People didn't realize why I bounced out, but it's because this microphone stand fell into frame here. Boom, and hit my drink, which was over here, or hit something into it, spilled it all over my computer and a bunch of stuff. Luckily, my coffee was pretty empty. today so not a big spill but makes me realize i need to find the cap for this alcohol cap it all right so guys she effectively is done wired up need some zip ties but it's wired up just need to bind it I didn't intend to actually finish today, but here we are. All finished up. And looking good. Looks really good. Nice flex. Holy cow. I guess it needs to, Sean, it's, Sean says, so that it can... Uh, Get the pumpkins out of the way. <laughs> nice incision wheels on there. It's heavy. It is a heavy truck. Got weight down low because of the axles. Weight up front from the grill that they put in here. The plastics. Definitely feels nose heavy, even with the battery in, but not too much, but like good for hill climbing and stuff. But it does, does have a lot of flex. And it's smooth with that really heavy oil we put in the shock. So be interesting to get it out there and give it its first run. But before we can do that, I do need to find a driver. I do need to finish the interior. Um, so I do have a few things that I still need to wrap up, but I won't be doing on camera. Uh, but yeah, so these will. Oh, see, so I have to redo the door because those should have been done after this was in the door handles. So. That'll help hold that front end up. But it's def it's definitely too light in here for me to put it in and install it because you see through the bed and it just looks tacky. So other than that, guys, I am stoked. But here's the internals. We'll fix this rat's nest by just sucking all this up together here. It'll be a little bit of a nest, but it'll be one, one compact grid or group of wires going across the uh, transmission there. 
ESC here, receiver here. I do want to get in here and flip this. Um, I'll try and do it now, see if that'll work. Because that would make it, that, that wire feels a little tight if, the, if stuff starts getting rocked around in here. It'll I do a little damage. What size is that? Okay, they're 1.5. We'll use our trusty Vanquish tool because the MIP one felt like it was going to strip them out. But I am enjoying the build process a lot more these days. I don't like that it tears up my desk for so long. I'm doing it doing it, I probably will need to find a different build station if I'm going to keep doing a lot of building. Because there's a lot of other video stuff I haven't been able to do because of this tearing up the desk. But other than that, yep, and so this is a quick way. If, if your wires are too short on these ESCs, it's a square, so you can literally just turn the fan to whatever direction you need the fan wires to go. And that'll clean it up. Perfect. All right, guys. Well, I got to get ready for a work meeting, so I'm going to call that good for now till I can get my controller and a, and stuff in here and uh, actually give it a, a bind and run. I think we're good to go. So thank you guys for tuning in, as always, and hanging out. We'll do one of these next time. I didn't have time, and I didn't intend to be on this long or I'd have worked harder on the front end, um, but to get – other people in here chatting, but it's also during the work day. So I don't know who exactly would be available. Um, but we'll try and get a, a group, a group chat going in one of these builds or uh, working on stuff series. I need to get the Kaiju up here next and uh, get that fixed. So maybe tonight I'll, uh, I'll go live again and, and invite some people in. So to hang out anyway, thanks for tuning in guys. We'll catch you later.